In this video, we're gonna talk about what is meant by sodium glucose transporter one, sodium glucose transporter two. So, SGLT1 and SGLT2. So, especially in the kidney. So you see, when you digest a lot of glucose, when, because we know the kidney acts as a filtrate of the, bu of the body. So it initially involves three steps, okay? So it does the ultra filtration using glomerous, right? So we have one ultra filtration using glomerous pore. Second one is reuptake of water, right? Reuptake of water food. Reuptake of water um, from the proximal tubule. Lastly, is secretion, right? So secretion of the waste into the renal renal tubule and get get it out. So you see, in the first step of the glomerous pole, there is specific limit of size for solutes to go past. So, for example, the if the blood circulation goes to a kidney, small molecules such as like a small protein, sodiums, many ions, solutes, or glucose will pass through, and many of those your body still needs them. So we have to find a way to prevent them back. It usually just um, prevents the entering of the red blood cell, for example, right? Hemoglobin protein. It prevents it going there because it's too large for passing through, passing through the pore. But we're still losing a lot of solutes that we need or glucose that we need. So what do we do? We step that we go to the proximal tubule where it would reuptake the water, especially glucose. Glucose that we still need. We don't want to have our secretion of losing of glucose. We can use that glucose for producing a lot of energy. So in a way, we want to get it back. So we will have that. So and this is secretion is a waste. We're not going to talk about it in this video. So you see the in the second step, it involves for your taking of the glucose primarily to SGLT and SGL2 is being used in these two steps. So in a way they function differently. Let me show you how. So if this is a proximal table, it's a really bad proximal table, but how we get the vibe here hopefully. So this is like a you know, beautiful proximal tubule right there. This, these two channels are classified differently. So you see SGLT1 is 2 to 1 ratio. It's 2 sodium to 1 ratio. SGLT1 is 1 to 1 ratio. And I have to talk about this in a previous video. So if it's two to one ratio, it means it uptakes two sodium. It must bind to sodium before it undergoes conformation change and allows allows the sodium to go to the other side of the membrane. Okay. So by doing so, it, it ensures that you have a high more energy, more free energy is being released. So before if you pass more sodium down this electrochemical gradient, you would ensure that you have much more, because we have, we have much sodium higher here. There is plenty of sodium in the proximal tubule than outside, but unlike we have high glucose outside than inside, right? So we have high glucose outside of the proximal tubule than inside, but in the sodium, you have a higher sodium inside than outside. So we have, if you have this high amount of ratio, it must bind, like for example, two sodium to the proc to SGLT one and one glucose, and these two sodium that would be upon binding, so they will release fire energy. Well, they go down their electrochemical gradient, okay? Because remember, what was the electrochemical gradient? The electrochemical gradient was something that, for example, if this is the um, your thing, if this is like inside a cell, if you have a high amount of sodium here, if you put two of this out there, right, because there's so much repulsion, you don't want them to be stay together, so they will repulse each other, and in a way, they would go into the other side of the membrane here, and the cytosol, say, this cytosol, so cytosol, two, 
to come here from there, they lose much more energy than just a single sodium energy, right? And this energy, this energy that is released, free energy, positive, both of them positive though, but this is more because you're releasing more sodium. This energy, sorry. So this energy that is going to be released much higher. And as I talked in a previous video, it, it can be used by the, by the symporter because it's a symporter, they transport both in the same way. Um, so this is important, and this is important to release that energy, transforming, transporting the glucose in a more ratio. Like for example, here maybe I think it's like eight eight thousand glucose. It can be it can pair with and transport it to the cytosol for the SGLT one. Okay, but for SGLT, oh, this is this is meant to be two. Sorry, so this is one. This is two. But SGLT two, we have like ninety because just much, much less energy. So, okay, so this is the basic idea here. So, and we know that SGL32 is found frequently in early proximal table in compared to SGL31. SGL31 found like here. I mean, it kind of makes sense because think of it. So, we have a plenty, initially we have plenty of glucose. We have like a very, imagine this is like a glucose, right? This blue, blue is glucose, glue, glucose. So we have this plenty of glucose here, but when it comes to there, much less glucose. So we don't want to waste energy. We don't want to waste energy here because SLGLT2 will eventually, no matter how much it tries, it will grab, grab the, um, the, Glucose, okay. Even though, even though SGLT two, SGLT two has a high Vmax and Km. So we know what Vmax and Km is. Vmax it means high Vmax means high capacity before it reaches the saturation. So that it no longer functions, and Km means if it has a high Km, means low affinity binding. So it has a high Vmax and high Km. Km value, Km value is concentration of um, the glucose at which half of the Vmax is being reached. Okay, so we call this constant value here. But high Vmax is means it can take up a lot of glucose in, its, in itself. It can, it can take up a lot of glucose. And you can see there's plenty of glucose here. And you don't have you don't need to have a lot, lot of high affinity here because I mean think about it. If you if the glucose is bounded and it, it has a high chance of actually being cleaved out and go over again. So but it's okay, you have like plenty of glucose here. If it's one bounded and released, it can bind to another one. If it's released, it can bind to another one, then transport it, okay? So we don't really care about having high affinity. That's why we have SLG1 here. So low ratio transporting less glucose. But it's still will transport and this SGLT1 because of the number and this high capacity would be able to take up many glucose. Okay? So there may be, imagine, like 98% glucose is reabsorbed, right? 98, let's say 95%. So here it's just Last five percent would be reabsorbed by the SGLT one. SGLT one instead of that reverse, we have SGLT one. We have um, low Vmax and low Km value. Low Vmax means low capacity. Low Km value means high affinity, right? So low. Capacity and high. Actually, it has a high affinity binding. It ensures that any even small glucose molecule is present. It binds it with high affinity, removing any chance of that there is a still some glucose left. With this amount of energy, I mean, think about it in technical ways. If it's here, there's a plenty of glucose. It's still, sorry. So we have like a still have a plenty of glucose outside of the proximal tubule, right? So 
glucose here concentration is much more outside. But still, because of the high concentration gradient of the glucose inside the pressure, there is not much of the moving against the concentration gradient here. The gradient is not much in a difference because it's still higher, but because of the high presence of glucose is still, there is not much glucose concentration gradient. So we do not need as much of the energy to pump it against its concentrational gradient because it's high pressure. But here, because of the high concentration here, but here what do we see? You see much less glucose, much less glucose, but it's still we have plenty of high glucose outside. So we still need to find a way, we have to provide a sufficient amount of energy that it can move against this concentrational gradient so it can be reabsorbed back. So what do we do? We can no longer use SLG2 because it doesn't give us as much energy. So we need to give SLG2 one that can bind to sodium and releasing a high amount of energy to the simple that can easily uptake back again take back the glucose against the concentrational gradient and hence why we use SLGT1. Mother nature used to it in the kidney. So that's in a way, that's it. We take all this glucose back, which is very good. And yeah, and the rest would go to the renal tube tubule to go to the waste, right? And sodium would be uptake back as well, right? So we know that too. So thanks for watching.